Hello and welcome to Be a Tier a German Engineer. Today we're back with episode 25 of our newest Let's Play series and this is of course Oxygen Not Included. Last time around we got a lot done, for example we brought Gemster back from space and that of course means we need to send him back out and explore our observable universe. And there's of course a couple of other things we need to do, for example we need to start up our spawn. So let's just jump right into it and see how that works out for us. And here we are. So let's get started right away. Let's turn our overlay back on and let's take a look into our rocket. Okay, Ziltoid's already here, grabbing all the data banks, wonderful, and bringing them back onto the planet's surface. That is precisely what we need. So let's take a look into research right away, where we at, and let's see what could we do. Probably the smartest thing is to go straight for the improved hydrocarbon propulsion because that gives us a bigger engine. And that needs 250 data banks, certainly something we have. So let's get started with that right away. And what else do we have down here? Yeah, we don't need that yet. Everything's looking good. Cryofuel propulsion. Okay. Yeah, and then Rat Bolt down here on the bottom. But cryofuels, that makes me think of something. Back on Ingenium, all the way on the bottom. We do have hydrogen down here. Yeah, and I wanted to pump it up for energy, but we really don't need to. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to put this project here on ice for now because it is already at negative 111 degrees Celsius. So it will be a hell of a lot easier to cool it down even more whenever we get to that point. And on top of that, we already built the infrastructure. So if we should need it for power for the base, we can get in here in a heartbeat. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to snip off the power line right here and leave the rest as it is. And we are just not going to touch it for right now. Yeah, that is a slight change in plans, but every once in a while that happens. I kind of forgot about cryofuels, so we're probably just going to leave it as it is. That is very good, and that will be very helpful in the future, and we can still use it for power if we really have to without a big problem. Meanwhile, over here on Abundino, so let's take a look. Our polluted water vent right here has three cycles until the next activity. So we have three cycles to build what we need to build. But first of all, let me show you. I have made a couple of changes here because right here I opened up both of those walls once again, mainly because it doesn't matter. We can go in and out whenever we want. But on top of that, we have a timer sensor right here and the timer sensor is connected to this conveyor chute. And it is set up to, well, 30 and 10. That is not exactly what I wanted. I wanted to have 30 and 270. So it is open for 30 seconds every 570. 30 and 570 makes 600 exactly one cycle. And that is just so we are not putting all the sand into here that we have. Because we certainly have different uses for sand. So putting every little piece that we have into here is definitely not what we want. And 30 seconds is more than enough to keep our water safe here fed. Especially since we already have 4.5 tons in here. That is definitely a good change. The second one is right here. And the reason for that is that this gas bridge right here has to go. Because when we turn this here on, of course, we are not going to get hydrogen right away. And with the current setup, we are going to put oxygen into here and damaging our generators, which is certainly something that we don't want. So we're going to deconstruct this here temporarily and put it back in whenever we are ready for it. OK, so this here is very, very good. But. We have this gas vent right here, here and here, and another one right there. And this one right here, I'm going to get rid of. That is right. And then plop it over here. And there's a reason for that, because I'm actually surprised that none of you has called me out on that in the comments down below, because this polluted water vent here erupts with contaminated water. Therefore, it is full with lots of germs. And if the water is full with germs and we don't clean it, what is going to happen is, of course, our electrolyzers right here will emit oxygen that has a lot of germs in it. And therefore, we're going to pump, pump all those germs into our base, which is, of course, not optimal. Therefore, we need to do something about it. So let's go back to Ingenium and over here, right down here on the bottom, the conveyor loader, we are going to say seeds and then we're going to say body bud seeds. Put a number nine priority, allow manual use, and now the dupe should bring by body bud seeds. And that is what we are going to use to make sure that we are not getting all of those germs into our base. I'm planning on getting four seeds over there, which should be more than enough for Abundino for right now. And now back over here on Abundino, we can see the first seed is here. And when we speed it up a little bit, number two, three, and four should arrive here any second as well. Let's see. Can you come by? There is another one. And two more should be here very, very soon as well. There's one that makes three. And one more makes four. 
that is all we need and then very simply we are going to go into furniture and we're going to grab us the hanging pots and the hanging pots we're going to plop one probably over here somewhere it's a little bit warmer and then right here this one needs to go this needs to go and this needs to go and as soon as these three here are deconstructed we're going to plop in three more hanging pots and plant some buddy butt seeds literally this simple and then we can make sure that we have all the flora scent in this area and all the oxygen that has all the bad germs in it comes out it will be annihilated immediately and that will be a very simple way of making this work without having to clean our water or our oxygen first over here on Ingenium, while we are waiting for our polluted water vent to come online on Abundino, let's take a look right here. If I go to priority and we take a look at what this here is, yes, that is what I thought. It is another cobalt volcano. We have looked at this before, but it has been a long, long time ago. Now, let's use blueprint. This here is our standard blueprint for a cobalt volcano tamer. So let's plop it in right here and let's make some slight modifications. Everything that we don't need has to go all of this here, for example, we don't need any of it up until this point right here. So that is what it should look like in the end. But the problem is that when we take a look into the temperature overlay, that on the right side we are very warm and on the left side we are very cold. And we want to keep it that way. At least the left side should stay very cold. That would be the general idea. So what can we do about it? We could just come... Yeah, what about if we come down here with a ladder, something like this here, and then over here. Now the dupes can run around here. Now, if we grab us a, one of those insulated tiles right here, and we're just going to come along here and plop a wall, probably, let's see, too high, something like this here should do. And then the dupes can walk around here, but we still have the insulated tile keeping us nice and cold over here. And probably, just to be safe, as a matter of fact, we're just going to make it double wide. Yeah, something like this here. We don't have to go quite as far. We don't need any of these here. Yeah, that is probably what that should look like in the end. That makes the most sense, at least to me. Yeah, anything else that I can think of down here on the bottom, of course, we need more insulated tiles because it's missing as always for some reason. But other than that, this here looks really good as of right now. Let's make sure we get rid of this here. And then actually, let's go back into cancel and just go into conveyor rails and we're gonna redo the conveyor rails later first we gotta figure out how we even get over here that would be highly important so let's take a peek probably we have to do something insane like coming all the way around here but at the same time once this here is built nobody has to touch it anymore so it really wouldn't matter yeah that's probably the smartest thing to do so let's grab us a plastic ladder and with the plastic ladder let's just go from yeah why wouldn't we right here straight up to yeah, it doesn't really matter. Right around here should get the job done. And then let's plop in a fire pole as well. And we're going to plop the fire pole just right here. There we go. And the reason for that is that we are coming from the bottom up instead of from the left to the right is that our dupes are already wearing Atmos suits when they come up here. From here, we would have to build that infrastructure completely fresh. And it makes a hell of a lot more sense to just do something simple like this here. So dupes, now you have more than enough to do and slowly but steadily we're gonna make our way over here and get all of this here built. On Abundino, the polluted water vent is erupting, but I don't think that we will get enough. No, yeah, nowhere near enough during the first eruption. So we will wait for one more eruption cycle, which is in 0.5 cycles. And then we should be able to see this liquid pump here turn on and we can watch what is going to happen to our spawn. So let's do precisely that. And here we have it, we are in the second eruption cycle and the water just started flowing. We have more than 500 kilograms worth of water in here and now we are finally getting ready to get the polluted water over here. So let's speed it up drastically because that will take a hot second to make it through this maze here. But as soon as that is done it will turn on and we will definitely watch what that is going to look like because a lot of people are always wondering how do you turn a spawn on properly and it is really really simple so today we're looking at precisely that and there we go our water is now arriving and we will see what happens in our f4 overlay it is a complete mess hydrogen and oxygen everywhere but all we are going to do is we just pump it out into the atmosphere because we couldn't care less that is at least the general idea so slowly but steadily the uh, pressure accumulates in this area right here and then our pumps will turn on we have set the bottom two atmos sensors to above a thousand and the top one to above 750 so the top one of course is turning on first 
So let's keep watching what's happening here. I will turn up the speed. But other than that, there's nothing else I'm going to do. The system will prime itself. There is no input needed other than what I already did. The game is currently saving. And now let's see. Slowly but steadily around this pump, we can see that the hydrogen is accumulating. It will take a hot second until that is done. But other than that, literally nothing needs to be done. So we're going to wait. I'm going to turn up the speed even more. There we go. The bottom pumps are now also pumping. They are already pure oxygen, so that would already be OK. But just for safety reasons, we're going to wait until it is completely done. So let's make sure we get hydrogen in all of these tiles right here and no more oxygen. Eventually, we should have only oxygen in those bottom two tiles here between the doors. At least that is the general idea. There we go. Slowly but steadily. Come on, pump. Pump all the oxygen out. We don't want it in here anymore. And you can see we are getting a little bit of spillage out here of hydrogen, but that literally doesn't matter. It will just go all the way to the top of the base eventually. Not a big deal at all. The left side here is already properly done. The right side here is still lagging behind a tiny little bit, but it should get there now any second. Let's slow it down for a second. How much do we have in here of oxygen? It's not a hell of a lot. Come on, hydrogen. Take over. We all know you want. It's just a question of time here. Should take around one cycle usually. And there it is. Now no more fresh oxygen can come in. And this oxygen that's down here on the bottom, every time the pump turns on, it will take it out. And there it is. Now we have it. This here is what the entire prime system looks like. All we have to do now is make sure that there's literally nothing else left in our pipes, which it isn't. We are good now. We can connect this here, this here, and also this here. And we can also plop another bridge into here and get rid of all of these high pressure gas vents. Now the dupes just have to come by and get all of this here done. And as soon as it is done, this system here will run for good. It can turn off whenever this here goes dormant. Not a big deal. It will just stay this way forever. That is the beauty about a Rodriguez spawn. And now everything's running as it should in our F4 overlay. We can see it. There are no more problems. Everything's perfectly fine. Also, our hydrogen generators are running based off of the smart battery. And we are, of course, producing a hell of a lot of power. And apparently we have a pip in here that's going to die a horrible death. But, well, that happens. Other than that, that is very good. And we are also producing a ton of oxygen. You can see we already have 16 or 17 kilograms per tile in this infinite storage right here. But there's one more thing that I want to do on Abundino, and that is all the way up here on the top. It may be a good moment to try to go to space. So let's grab us this ladder right here and let's bring it to right around here, maybe. Yeah, that should be fine. And then, of course, this one here as well. Let's dig all of this stuff here out too high here as well. Then we need insulated tiles and we're just going to plop it. Let's see right here should be fine. We need a total of seven of them, I believe. Is this here seven? Yeah, that is seven. That is wonderful. And then we can just plop a liquid storage, not a liquid storage, a liquid lock at the end and build something kind of like this here. That should certainly get the job done. We can come all the way through here, something like this here. That will be good. And in stations, are we going to come in here, grab us the atmosphere checkpoint. Turn it around and plop it right there. And then atmosuit docks a total of six. Yes, we have only five dupes, but future proofing, you know, better have one too many than one not enough. And now the dupes can build all of this stuff here. And then eventually we're just going to come with this gas pipe all the way up to here and plop it into there. So all the excess oxygen that is not going into our base is going to go into here. Thankfully, we are not in a hurry because we don't really have anything to do up here, at least not yet. So that will be OK. And then in F2, we just got to find some power. There we have that. We're just going to come straight across here and hook it up as well. And the dupes can build all of this here completely without supervision. Meanwhile, back on Ingenium, let's check our research real quick. And yeah, we are almost done. Only the rap old research is missing and that is perfectly fine. So it is time for Champster to go back to space. So let's take a look into our space for a module. We have food in here. Yeah, 32,000. That's fine. Oh yeah, and I've got one more thing in here. You guys called me out in the comments and you are absolutely correct. I made a horrible mistake in here and I didn't see it and I'm not entirely sure why. But well, it happens. Not a big deal. What we're going to do, this crown molding up here, we're going to rip it out. The cot needs to go. This uh, metal sculpture here needs to go. 
the pneumatic door on the bottom, and the one on the top. We're gonna tear all of this here out. And as soon as all of that's gone, we are going to slightly rebuild it. And you will see what we are going to do. And once again, that I should have seen before, but you guys called me out on it. And I appreciate that. Because if I don't take your input or anybody else's, I will never get better myself. And that is how the game should be played. So let's implement what you guys said. And then we will see the improvement that we are making. Just so you can see it right now, we have barracks right here. And that is about to change. And here we have it, Kribak was just here and he tore all of this stuff here out. So, what are we going to do here? First of all, this nomadic door right here, we're going to copy it. And they used to be right here, but they need to be right there. Yes, they can not just be stacked on top of each other and it will work just fine. What that allows us to do is to go into furniture and in furniture grab us a comfy bed as in the other build yeah just like that and if i got this crown molding here it can go as well and as soon as this crown molding here is gone we can plop in a second one of our masterpiece pictures and that is going to make a bedroom out of this barracks which is of course a hell of a lot better than a barracks so let's make that here happen and then we're gonna send champster back to space and there we have it, Kremlin Green is here and he's creating, of course, another masterpiece and we can already take a look into our room overlay and now it is a bedroom. So now we have a bedroom, we have a washroom and we have a mess hall and on top of that, yeah, we still have our party line phone as well. So Chempster is going to be even happier in here than he already used to be. And that is, of course, very, very good. Now we can slowly but steadily send him back to space. I think there's only one more slight change that I want to make. And that is plop an airflow tile here, here, here and there. And that is just so that our carbon dioxide can go all the way to the bottom. So let's get that done here really, really quickly. And then we're going to go right back to space. And there we have it. I reconsidered. I just put the airflow tiles in the corners. That should be fine. So let's get started. We need to change the crew and we got to make sure that we have a Chempster in here. Chempster is the pilot. And then also the comfy bed needs to be assigned to Chempster or he's just going to sleep on the floor. Certainly not what we want him to do. Yeah, other than that, we should be fine. We just need to change the destination. And the destination is we have a 10 range. Therefore, we can go three here four over here and then three back and that is exactly what we're gonna do we're gonna come down to here three far then back to ingenium not down here though we need to come all the way to the top there we go and then in the space for a module we're gonna say begin the launch sequence and now champster should come by and he should be off to space once again and here comes our favorite fearless spacefarer and he's hopping into the rocket and there we have it we should have lift off here any second yeah there we go and champster is off to space once again and we will check in on him very shortly meanwhile all the way down here in the bottom right beside our fridge yes this construction here has made quite a lot of progress and we can see it the dupes came all the way up here we dug a little bit higher just so we can get rid of the hydrogen then we came over to the right i did not want to mess with the slime so i just put in a wall then we came down and we put in this wall here and everything the dupes could reach yep they already built it just as simple as that you have a tiny little bit of water here that we need to get rid of and of course dupes you do really need to pick up that ice here before it melts that is also highly important but of course other than that the next thing that we need is this liquid lock right here that is also quite important that we get this here done before we are digging into all of the salt water right here that we also somehow have to get rid of but one step after the next in f6 i already put in this pipe right here so we just have to connect it because i snipped it off and we should have crude oil coming in so let's make sure that this here gets properly filled up and when that is done we're gonna dig over to the right meanwhile in space champster is on his telescope and let's take a look what he's up to on the star map and yeah he can apparently see all the way to down here so we're just going to leave him here until he gets bored and as soon as he does get bored we are going to move our rocket probably over here somewhere which probably makes the most sense so we can then get back to ingenium then we're going to refuel and go out into the other direction and we're going to do that as long until we cannot see anything else anymore with the range of our rocket. It's literally this simple. One by one by one, slowly but steadily, we are going to see more and more and more of our observable universe. Eventually, we have to upgrade our rocket, but that is certainly something that is not going to happen anytime soon. There is a good amount of time in between here and there. Uh, meanwhile, down here on the bottom, Kravak apparently managed to get himself stuck. I'm not looking at what the hell these guys are doing for one minute and everything's going to hell. 
yeah, they're just building down here. Not that big a deal. I got rid of this one uh, steam turbine right here on the left, just so the dudes can go in and out right here for right now. But other than that, they're just building. I literally did nothing other than making sure that they are not going to dig this tidier up. So we do not activate our cobalt a little bit prematurely. But of course, now we got to get rid of this piece right here. So Kriwa can get back out. Yeah, on not only this one, but also this one here needs to get rid of. And then he should be able to climb back in and back out. Okay, you good, Kribak? You gonna make it, sir? Oh, now you keep on building. Apparently, you were not in that bad of a shape. But for right now, we're just gonna keep on building everything we can. And when everything is built that we can build, then we're gonna take care of all the salt water right here. Meanwhile, in space, Champster is not bored, so we can change our destination. And let's see, we can go four tiles wide. We could probably just go to somewhere like right here to get the job done, right? So we can take all of this here out. And as soon as we have that, we can just go back home. Probably going to waste one tile or so, but that is fine. Better we have one left over before we can get back home. All right, so... Down here on the bottom, the dupes have now finally built everything that they can build. Everything that's reachable currently has been built. All that I added is this ladder right here. Well, there are a couple more things. First of all, I plopped in this heavy watt wire coming all the way along here, and it's feeding in all the way from there. The only thing that's missing is this connection. I don't want to hook it up yet. I just want to be ready for it. The second thing that I did is right here, this pipe right there. Maybe take a look at it. Yeah, that is where our polluted water comes from. I just extended it all the way through here all the way over to there and then the pipe that we already had here i left it there and then hooked it up to our liquid reservoir literally this simple and that is the reason why i have not torn out this insulated liquid pipe so what can we do next well we need to get rid of all the salt water right here and i think we are trying to do this extremely simple we're just going to dig over into this general direction right here and we're gonna dig out a lot. We're just gonna come all the way down here and we hope that we can drain it. Probably what needs to happen is that we build a ladder down here and we dig out even more stuff down here on the bottom. But that is perfectly fine. First of all, we need to get this here dug out and then we're gonna go straight downwards. And right here we have it and the dupes have even already cleaned up. Yes, down here on the bottom, we dug this here out, which was mainly Krivok's work. He did it basically solo, but other than that, the water has drained. I already had a mop up over here. Over here we can't reach yet. Here is mopped and they already picked up most of the stuff that's laying around here. So that is of course very, very good and certainly nothing to complain about. So what else do we have left on the list? We need metal tiles. Let's just go down here and copy us one over. And then slowly but steadily, we are just going to fill it in with metal tiles and then plop in the insulated tiles. As soon as that is done, down here on the bottom, we are done. Let's make sure everything else is hooked up to power. That is done. And also our piping here is completed. So that is very good. So last on the list is we need to build all of this stuff over here. And we also need to go ahead and this cobalt volcano here, we need to analyze it. And the nice thing is, look at this here. We already have a vacuum in here. Yes, because the water filled all of this here up. There was one tiny little tile of uh, carbon dioxide right here. I just plopped in a temporary airflow tile right here. But other than that, we had nothing to do. We don't even have to pump it empty. So dupes, let's get this last piece here built. And then we will get a little bit of water in here. And then after that, we will just turn the system here on here everything is dug out and apparently the volcano is about to erupt we need to get some water in there and i'm just going to put in salt water i guess i shouldn't have drained it out completely but it is really almost unavoidable so come on pump you just need to live very temporarily and we've got it okay it is ready to erupt and we are getting salt water in here and that is perfectly fine as it is let's see we have 10 kilograms in here let's make it 20 kilograms and then let's turn it off. Yeah, I just put in a conductive wire really quickly. It doesn't matter. We're just going to snip it off and call it a day. Now we can rip all of this stuff here out in F2. There's all of this here can go in F6. We're going to make sure that this pipe here also disappears. Not needed anymore. And also the liquid pump. But now we should be ready to roll. We need to get rid of this plastic ladder right here. And this plastic ladder right there as well. And when all of this here is deconstructed, yeah, we probably now can't get in there, can we? So this insulated tile you can go, this one can go, and we plop two in right there instead. And then we're just going to grab us a second steam turbine and plop it right there. It's literally this simple. That is all that is needed. 
Meanwhile in space, Chimster has to be sitting around here and being bored for a long time. And look at this here. We have found three planetoids. That's very good. Very, very good indeed. That's actually very nice. What do we have here? Chlorine gas vent. Well, uh, well, not optimal. Let me put it this way. This one right here has a cleaning gas vent, natural gas geyser, and the tungsten volcano. That is certainly interesting. And over here, we have niobium on our magma planetoid. So, let's tell Chimster to go back home. Yes, you're on the phone, I know, but that call will have to wait. So let's change the destination, and let's bring you straight back home, Chimster. When you're back, we're gonna refuel your rocket, and then we're gonna send you out again relatively quickly. And while I'm down here waiting for the dupes to pick up the last few pieces of salt, I see Chimster is back. Apparently he made it back onto the planet and he is already at work once again and analyzing our cobalt volcano. What a freaking guy. Gotta love it. All right, Chimster, get it done. And then we will take a look at this here and see what our cobalt volcano is all about. And of course, Chemster got it done before the salt got even picked up. So let's take a look. What do we have here? Next dormancy in 38.7 cycles. Activity 58.2 cycles every 81.9. And it is a pretty nice output. Let's take a look here down here in the bottom. Flow averages 396.6 grams a second in average. And that includes, of course, the dormancy period as well. So every single second, we are getting about 400 grams out of this one volcano. That is awesome. And that is certainly nothing to swat at. So let's keep on going and then we will see how it goes. But let's take a last look at our spawn right here. And of course, as expected, there are no issues whatsoever. It's working just fine. And over here, we are getting more and more polluted water because we are producing more polluted water during the active period than we are using over here. And everything is perfectly fine. Yep, that is certainly nothing I can complain about. And by now we have also stored 91.5 kilograms worth of hydrogen. That is certainly very, very good. This system here will just keep on running. Meanwhile, on board of our recon rocket, we are looking really good. We still have 21,000 kilocalories, so that is more than enough. Other than that, everything's fine. Let's take a look in the F4 overlay. No carbon dioxide or anything. Yes, our gas vent down here works as expected. So we're going to send it straight back out. Let's change the destination. And we only have a remaining range of one tile. Why is that? What is going on, guys? What are we lacking? Do we have petroleum in here? Yes, we do. Maybe we are full of petroleum. We are lacking fertilizer, okay? Dupe, so why are you not bringing fertilizer? Did you not realize that this needs to be done? Let's give it a number one priority. And then let's go back to number nine. And I hope the dupes will bring it by here any second. And then we're going to send it back up to space. And there's Death Pony just walking away from delivering our fertilizer. So that is very good. Now we can send it back out. Let's change the destination and let's take a look. Where could we go with it? three or four tiles wide would be good. We could go four tiles or three tiles into this direction here and then come over to the right. Yeah, that's probably what we're going to do. So we're going to go right there and then we're going to say begin the launch sequence. And now we just got to wait for Chemster. Chemster, where are, what are you doing, Chemster? Why are you sleeping right there? Seriously, you have a perfectly fine bed in this rocket, my man. Ah, Chemster, every once in a while, I'm really wondering what the hell is going on with you. But so far, you're doing a pretty good job, and you're off once again. So, let's get up there, and here we have it, lift off and goodbye. And now let's watch one eruption cycle of our cobalt volcano. That is going to be very good. The cobalt comes out at about, what, almost 800 degrees Celsius. We are plopping it into our conveyor loader. We are sending it around as always. We are heating up the steam in our chamber. Our steam turbines will start to produce a lot of power. And then when our cobalt gets cold enough, we're going to send it down here into the bottom right into those metal tiles right there. So let's speed it up a little bit and see what that actually looks like right here. And then let's take a look at our conveyor belt so we can actually follow it around. And it's just going around and around and around until it reaches, I believe it is below 150 degrees Celsius. As soon as that happens, we're going to give it to the bottom tiles. And then we just cool it down with polluted water, which is set to negative 5 degrees right here in our thermo aqua tuner. So apparently it takes a little bit longer than I expected. So let's turn up the speed. Looks a little bit odd, but it is a hell of a lot faster. There we go. The first pieces are coming in. 
And we're going to send them right back out. Apparently, one goes through is enough to get it to below 10 degrees Celsius. That is what I set it to because we're going to send it through here. And I don't want to have it at 30 degrees. I would have probably set it even a little bit lower if it makes any problems over here. But so far, it looks like that our anti-entropy thermal nullifier can't keep up with it. But that is all I have for you today. So if you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video, and of course, comment down below. You know it, I'm always happy to hear from you. And with that, I say thank you and peace.